Hello. In this video we're going to uh, demonstrate uh, many of the features that you would have covered in your Level 1 Excel course, um, but we're just doing this as a review for you. So if you're, um, if you're not uh, sure that you're totally familiar uh, with Excel and the screen and everything that's involved uh, from Level 1, then this is a good video for you to watch before moving on into Level 2. So I have an Excel workbook open on my screen here. It's brand new. I've just opened it from the program. You'll see that if we go to the title bar at the top, it says Book 1 Excel. When you see um, the title bar reading Book 1, then you know that the file or the workbook has not yet been saved. So it's just a, a brand new one that we're starting with with Excel. Once we save it and give it a name, then that name will show up in the title bar. So what we're looking at now is the Excel window and all of the features within the window itself. So some of them will look familiar to other Microsoft products that you've used, such as uh, Microsoft Word and Microsoft PowerPoint. You see that across the top here, we have the menu bar. So the menu bar, the first three, maybe four, are the same as they would be in Microsoft Word and PowerPoint. File, Home, Insert, Page Layout. Um, and then from that point across, they get specific to uh, what the features that you're going to need within an Excel program. So again, if you click on the menu, then um, you're you're you go to the area that the menu represents. So for instance, file, you click on file, it takes you to what's called the backstage area. Um, and then we can just click on that arrow to go back to file. All right, home is your home screen and it will also have your home ribbon. So this area below the menu bar is your ribbon and um, these are all your shortcut buttons to the features that are available within the program. Insert has um, features available again on buttons um, on the ribbon bar that are um, specific to uh, inserting, whether you're inserting a picture or another table or a chart of some kind. Page layout is where you go for your margins and your orientation and setting your print area and that kind of thing. Formulas, there's many, many different formulas in Excel. We'll learn more about them in the course. So these are your various menus that are available in Excel and the area below it is called the ribbon. You'll see that the ribbon is also separated into sections. You can see a real light line there and there, and that this section is called the font section. So your instructions will also will often say, uh, go to the font area of the ribbon and click on bold. And that's exactly what that means. You go to that area and click on bold. It might say, go to your number area and choose currency formatting or counting number formatting or percentage or whatever. So that's um, what it's referring to in your ribbon area. It is also broken into sections. Uh, so you'll need to look at those um, in uh, different features that you're looking for. This area down here is the actual worksheet area. It's broken down into rows. So rows go down the side and columns, and columns go across the top. Columns are lettered A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and on. You can, um, it's even difficult to scroll to the end of a worksheet, um, because worksheets are huge. We rarely, um, and especially in this course, you won't be using a whole worksheet, but um, I, I believe there's like 256 columns, and then um, if we did control end, that doesn't even take us to the bottom, so I'm not sure. Um, there's thousands of rows available in a, an Excel worksheet. Um, you would see large organizations like NASA that would use huge worksheets like this, but we won't be using a huge one in our course. So columns are um, indicated by letters, so column A column D. Notice if I click right in the middle of the column header, then the whole column is selected, right? 
if I click in the cell below, then just the one cell is selected. Same with the row, row 1, row 8. If I click in the middle of the row header, then the whole row is selected. If I click on a cell, then just the cell is selected. All right, so that's going to be important because there will be times when you have to work with a whole column or a whole row, and you'll need to use the the column or row headers to select the whole thing. If um, I'm going to go to an actual um, Excel worksheet that I've opened um, and then we can have a look at this with some actual data in it. This area of the work of the workbook is called the formula bar right in here. The formula bar and then this spot. Actually if you hover your mouse there it actually says formula bar. Insert function is a fast button uh, to get to all of those functions that we can also get to up in our formula menu. But we could go to our insert function button and that brings up again all of the different um, uh, functions and formulas that are available. If I choose all here and then I start scrolling down you can begin to see the hundreds of formulas that are available. We'll be using probably about 10 of these in our course um, to learn how to insert a function and a formula in a worksheet to do some calculations that we need it to do. So that's your uh, formula bar. You can type up in the formula bar, so um, if you prefer to type your formula by hand, you can do it there. You can also type your formula right within the cell. I prefer to use the uh, function, and I'll show you why. Let's say we want to do an average. Okay, so first of all, I want to be in the right place before I do that. So I'm going to do the average of the first and the second half. So I'm just going to demonstrate it. I'll look for the average function. There it is. Click OK. Then what happens is a function argument box comes up. And so if I spend some time learning, which you will, what this um, function argument box is asking you for, uh, then it's going to be very simple for you to um, figure out how to put a formula together. So I want um, Excel to figure out the average of the first cell and the second cell. Click OK and there it does the math for you. So what it does for average, just like you would be doing if you had a calculator, it adds the two together and then divides by two to get your average feature. So while I'm here I'm also going to show you how to use what's called the fill handle. I'm going to increase the size of my screen so you can see this a little bit better because it's a little hard to see. But if you look at the bottom, wherever you, uh, whatever cell your cell pointer is in, so your cell pointer uh, will indicate the cell by a solid box that goes around it. The bottom of that cell pointer is a little box that you can see. If you hover your mouse over it, it changes to that cross, not the white cross, but that dark black cross. That's called the fill handle. So if I whoops, click on the cell, grab the fill handle, so you want to make sure you've got that black cross, not the white one, click and drag down, then that formula that I put into cell D4 is going to copy all the way down. And there you go. And so it gives you the average all the way down. So I only had to put the formula in once and I used the fill handle to copy it down. Um, another feature or another um, uh, area of the worksheet is called this name box up here. It's the name box. It tells you what cell your cell pointer currently is in. So it's in E1. If I go over here to E1, I see that my cell pointer is sitting there. If I click down here in B6, then it says B6. I can create name ranges as well. So if I highlight the data in this column, click there, type the word average, and press enter, then what I've done is I've created a name range. So now if I go up here, click, I see that the name that I created 
is called average. I click on it and my cell pointer then moves to highlight the area that I created um, in the name box. So you'll learn more about that as well as we work through um, the um, uh, work, worksheets and the various different functions and formulas that we're going to learn in level two accounting. Um, so there's a few other things that I want to show you. Um, to save a worksheet, same as um, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, you go to your file menu, you can click either save or save as, um, usually save as, because usually you're opening a file um, that has come with your textbook and then you're going to have to rename it. So then you browse to the location where you want to save it. I want to just save mine for now on my desktop and usually you have to give it a new name. So I will give it, I'll just call it a practice file and press enter and that file will now be on my desktop so that if I want to reopen it that's where it will be located you'll probably use your USB so saving a worksheet is um, the same pretty much same process as saving a Microsoft Word document editing a cell you just click within the cell and if you want to change something you can click up here and type and change then press enter and the change is updated or you can double click right within the cell and then change it that way. So you simply uh, enter into the cell and make your changes then press enter. So um, uh, editing data in a cell is fairly simple as well. Printing a workshop, a worksheet, sorry, um, you can simply go file print and then change all of your printing um, features here. We uh, will rarely be printing uh, within um, our course, you'll be asked to save uh, workbooks and then upload them to the Dropbox. Um, but what you want to what you want to uh, look out for is if you have a very large worksheet and you only want a part of it printed, then you go to your page layout and you go to your print area. So first of all, I'm just going to whoops, I actually selected that and I didn't want to. I'm going to try to select from the start to the finish. So I've highlighted all of it. I go to my page layout, print area, and I'm going to set the print area. So now when I go to print, only that print area will print. If there was other stuff on this spreadsheet, it wouldn't print uh, for this occurrence because I told it specifically what to print. All right, that autofill feature that we looked at here in the bottom corner, uh, there are some uh, preset features within Excel that are really pretty cool. So if I type uh, January and then just click on that and drag it down, it automatically fills in the months of the year. So it's been programmed to do that. I can do the same if I just wanted to use a short form it recognizes the short form for the months as well and again it copies them down. If I wanted the date, so I wanted the 12th of January and I can format that to, to look any way that I want. So it starts at the 12th and it goes all the way down. If I, um, if I wanted the days of the week, same thing. I type it, I use the fill handle, copy it down and it, it um, copies them out and it just keeps repeating them as you can see uh, for however many rows you copy them into. Um, I can do the same if I was doing a worksheet with uh, product numbers. So if I was doing inventory, it would copy all of those down. Or if I was doing quarter one, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, Right? If I was typing information for various quarters within a year, maybe what I want is quarter two and quarter four. Right? I copy those and let's see what we get. It repeats two, four, two, four, two, four. So there's various um, ways that you can use the um, autofill. Um, uh, to copy things down. 
um, there's a quick um, auto sum button under the home menu way over here it's called auto sum so it's been set up on a ribbon bar because it is one of the most frequently used features so I can click in B15 for my total click once on the auto sum button and it drops the formula in it highlights the cells that it thinks I want to add up and then if I click a second time it drops the total in so when you get quick at it you're just going to double click and it'll be done so that's called the auto sum uh, feature uh, next we're going to widen columns um, or rows so to do so you just have to click between the column headings so remember the column headings are the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G uh, you can click and drag to widen that column or you can double click and then it widens the column to the widest piece of data in the um, uh, in the column itself uh, so we can widen the columns that way we can also widen the rows that way just by clicking and dragging and that widens the width of the row um, alright so I think from here um, you can uh, pick up various different ways of using Excel I'm just going to type a few numbers in just to show the uh, number buttons up here in the ribbon bar. So 98, I've typed 98. If I want to use uh, an accounting uh, dollar sign, then it puts the dollar sign in way over in the left, puts the decimal po point in and two decimal places. The next one is it changes the number and puts it into a percent style. So 256, it drops a percent in, and then I can tell it how many decimal places I want from there. The comma feature, Oh, when you see this happen, whether it shows as number signs, it just means that your column is not wide enough to accommodate all the numbers. So then you have to just double click. But the comma feature puts in the comma at every thousand um, so that uh, you don't have to. So when you're entering data in Excel, you don't ever type commas. You let the um, program do that yourself. Um, and then these two buttons increase and decrease decimals um, when you're working with various decimal places. So I think that's it for now. Um, uh, that should be a good review from level one to get you going before you move forward on level two.